Welcome. Thank you for your interest in Komatsu products. Today we will be conducting a pre-operation inspection on the WA600-8 wheel loader. During the inspection, we'll be checking for excessive wear, damage, or leaks on the machine. This is important for a couple reasons. Number one, we want to make sure the machine is operating at peak performance. And number two, it adds to the overall longevity of the machine. Should you have any questions about any of the materials that we cover today, you can reference the operation and maintenance manual found in the cab of the machine. Once again, thanks for your interest and let's get started. As we approach the machine, the first thing we're going to want to do is check the cab to make sure that there's no one in there and that the machine is properly chalked to avoid any movement. To begin the inspection of the machine, we're going to start with the overall structure of the bucket. As we work our way from the top to bottom, we're going to look at the welds. We're also going to look at the bolts and pins. We want to make sure that they're properly in place and secured. As we take a step back and evaluate the ground engaging tools, we're looking for any excessive wear or damage. If everything checks out okay, we're going to continue to work ourselves around the bucket. We're going to start with the cab and work our way down. We're going to inspect the lights, the hydraulic lines, the cylinders, the boom, the linkage, the mounting points, the back side of the bucket, the bolts, the pins. You want to make sure all the points are receiving the proper amount of lubrication. Now let's take this opportunity to take a quick look underneath the front of the machine to make sure that there's no leaks. If everything checks out okay there, we're now going to move on to the tire and wheel inspection. This will be the same inspection that we do for all four tires. We're going to start by looking at the inner and the outer tire and wheel to make sure it's free of any damage. From there, we're going to look at the hardware to make sure everything's there and then also it appears to be properly tightened. As we continue along with the machine, we're going to stop and inspect the fenders, the mounting points. We'll then get into the articulation area where we'll start with the hydraulic lines, move down to the cylinders, to the drive line, to the articulation joint components. And before we move on, we want to inspect the transmission oil level. Moving forward, this is the location of our contract switch. We also have another opportunity to do a visual inspection of the pumps and the drive lines. We'll perform the same tire and wheel inspection that we have previously done. If everything checks out okay there, we're going to take a few steps back and we're going to look at the handrails and the mirrors to make sure everything is there and secure. As we continue to the rear of the machine, this is the location of our battery disconnect switch. This next switch is our exterior cab light. This first compartment here houses our breakers. Our second compartment houses our batteries. When you're looking at the batteries, you want to make sure that the fasteners are correctly on and that it's free of any sort of damage or corrosion. And now we're ready to mount the machine. But before we do so, we want to make sure our access point is free of any damage. And remember, when mounting the machine, you want to make sure you're using proper mounting and dismounting techniques. As we access this first compartment, we want to make sure it's free of debris and leaks. If everything checks out okay, we're ready to move on to the next compartment. In this compartment, we'll conduct the same visual for debris and leaks. And if everything looks good, we'll move on to the coolers to make sure that there's no plugging. From there, we want to take this opportunity to look at the coolant level. If everything checks out from there, we're ready to move on to the rear of the machine. As we make our way to the rear of the machine, the first thing we want to look at is the rear view camera and the lights. From there, we want to inspect the fan, make sure that it's free of debris and damage. If everything checks out okay, we're now ready to take this opportunity to look underneath the machine to make sure that there's no leaks. As we continue to work around the right side of the machine, the first compartment that we'll come to houses the additional breakers. The second compartment house the DEF tank, which is identified with a blue cap. Underneath, you'll notice a sight tube for checking the level of DEF. Also, we have two locations to fuel the machine, standard and quick fill. Each require ultra low sulfur diesel. Now we're ready to mount the right side of the machine. But before we do that, we want to take a couple steps back to make sure the handrails and the access points are secure and in place. If everything checks out okay, it's time to mount the machine. 
The first check we're gonna do is of the air filter. We wanna make sure all the latches are secure and in place. Once everything checks out okay here, now we can move to the engine compartment. Now what we're checking for is that there's nothing loose, there's no leaks, and the compartment is free of any debris. We wanna check the sediment bowls on the pre-filters too to make sure there is no contamination in the fuel system. There is also a sediment drain valve for the fuel tank located on the machine in the inside of the left rear tire. Also, we have one fluid to check, and that's the engine oil. Now, if everything checks out okay, we're ready to move on to the next compartment. In here, we're gonna perform the same inspection as we did on the other side. The only addition is we're gonna be checking the air restriction gauge located right here. Now it's time to dismount the machine. We're gonna to continue to work around the machine. The only new inspection points are going to be the alternate exit and the sight glass for checking your hydraulic oil and also the mounting points for the hydraulic tank. If everything checks out there, we're gonna complete the exact same inspection on this side that we did on the other. We're gonna start with the tire and wheel and we're gonna work our way forward with the articulation area, the fenders, the working equipment. Once everything checks out there, we've now completed our ground level inspection and we can move to the cab. As we continue to make our way to the cab, there's gonna be two more checks. The first one's gonna be the windshield washer fluid. The last check will be a visual inspection to make sure there's no leaks, nothing loose, and no debris. If everything checks out okay there, we've completed our pre-operation inspection and we're ready to operate.